What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about a new Linux version of Cobalt Beacon being actively used in attacks around the world. Oh drat these computers, they're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Cobalt Strike is a popular red team tool for Windows, which is also heavily used by threat actors. At the time of this writing, there is no official Cobalt Strike version for Linux. Now in case that quick intro did not help you understand what Cobalt Strike is, it is a paid penetration testing product that allows to deploy an agent named a beacon on the victim machine. Beacon includes a wealth of functionality to the attacker, including, but not limited to, command execution, key logging, file transfer, SOX proxying, privilege escalation, mimicats, port scanning, and lateral movement. Beacon is in memory or fileless in that it consists of stageless or multi-stage shellcode that once loaded by exploiting a vulnerability or by executing a shellcode loader will reflectively load itself into memory of a process without touching the disk. It supports command control servers and staging over HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, SMB name pipes, as well as forward and reverse TCP. Now stop gawking and pay attention. Now, in August 2021, research at Intizer discovered a fully undetected ELF implementation of Cobalt Strike's beacon, which they named Vermilion Strike. The stealthy sample uses Cobalt Strike's command and control protocol when communicating to the command and control server and has remote access capabilities such as uploading files, running shell commands, and writing to files. The malware is fully undetected in VirusTotal at the time of their research and was uploaded from Malaysia. Based on telemetry uh, with collaboration between Interzer, Interzer partners at McAfee Enterprise ATR, this Linux threat has been active in the wild since August, targeting telecom companies, government agencies, IT companies, financial institutions, and advisory companies around the world. Targeting has been limited in scope, suggesting that this malware is used in specific attacks rather than mass spreading. After further analysis, Interzer found Windows samples that use the same command control servers. The samples are re-implementations of Cobalt Strike Beacon. The Windows and ELF samples share the same functionalities. The sophistication of this threat, its intent to conduct espionage, and the fact that the code hasn't been seen before in other attacks, together with the fact that it targets specific entities in the wild, led Intazur to believe that this threat was developed by a skilled threat actor. Meep, meep. <laughs> a file was uploaded to VirusTotal from Malaysia and had no detections in VirusTotal. The file shares strings with previously seen Cobalt Strike samples and triggers a number of Yara rules that detect encoded Cobalt Strike configurations. The ELF file is built on a Red Hat Linux distribution. It uses OpenSSL via dynamic linking. The shared object names for OpenSSL on Red Hat based distributions are different from other Linux distributions. Because of this, it can only run on machines with Linux distribution based on Red Hat's codebase. The sample starts by forcing itself to run in the background using daemon. It will decrypt the configuration using the Zor key 0x69. The key 0x69 is a common value used by Cobalt Strike's encryption configuration tool. Vermilion Strike's configuration format is the same as Cobalt Strike. Tools used for extracting Cobalt Strike configurations can also be used to extract Vermilion Strike configuration. The Windows components of the configuration are ignored for this Linux version. <laughs> Further decryption is performed in a heap with decoded strings, keys, and values required by the beacon for its operation. The beacon will then generate a SHA-256 hash sourced from a random number seeded from the thread ID. Now this value will be used later in DNS beaconing. Next, a public RSA key will be imported for later use. The beacon will begin fingerprinting the machine. A random number will be generated and the process ID will be fetched. It will grab the kernel version of the machine using uname. Next, the beacon will fingerprint network information through the get if address function. It will loop through the interfaces looking for IP version 4 addresses. It will gather the interface with an address not equal to 127.0.0.1 and stage the IP uh, version 4 address. 
Next, the beacon will fingerprint the entry in the local password database for information about the current effect, uh, effective user ID of the process. The beacon will then fingerprint the host name of the machine. The collected information will be formatted into a string, encrypted with the public RSA key and Base64 coded as a standard for communication with the Cobalt Strike server. Prepended to the fingerprint string is the value 1.0.1.lr. This appears to be an internal version string. A similar string, w1.0.1, was found in a newly discovered Windows sample of Vermilion Strike that shares the same uh, command and control server and more functionality. Now, I assume the LR here is for Linux Red Hat and the W is for Windows. The encrypted data is sent to the command and control server in a similar way that the metadata is sent from the Cobalt Strike beacon to the command and control server. The payload that is encrypted starts with the marker 0xbeef. The same marker is used by the legitimate Cobalt Striker beacon. Command and control is primarily performed over DNS, but also available over HTTP. This DNS-based approach for communications can help avoid tradi traditional defenses that monitor HTTP traffic. Commands are received via DNS address and text records. The beacon first makes DNS requests out to hard-coded subdomains and gets an IP address returned. Normally, DNS requests on host names are intended to be translated into an IP address for which to visit. In this case, the IP address returned is not used as an IP address, but for triggers to change the beacon behavior. Forgive me, my friend. Uh, do you like Blackberry Pie? Uh, no, no. Uh, did you say Blackberry Pie? Yum, yummy. We'll have some. Once the beacon gets the signal to download a task, it will pe perform a DNS text query to the domain's name servers. The result of the text query is a Base64 encoded and AES encrypted struct containing task information. Tasks that the beacon can perform are change, path, change working directory, get current working directory, append, write to file, upload file to C, uh, command and control server, execute command via popen, get disk partitions, and list files. The malware uses a separate thread to execute the tasks. The tasks are scheduled as jobs via a semaphore to ensure not too many jobs are executed at once. Vermilion Strike has a third way of communicating with the command and control server via ICMP ping messages. The malware adds the current PID to the offset 0x4 in the header, and the encrypted payload is sent as data in the ICMP packet. The data size for an ICMP packet is limited to 65,507 bytes, but the molar uses a size limit of 64,000 bytes for the payload. The code for sending and processing ICMP messages exists in the malware, but the code for enabling it via the configuration is not present. This means it has the capability, but can't be configured to use it. This suggests it may be a new feature that hasn't been fully developed yet. Vermilion Strike is not the only Linux port of Cobalt Strike's beacon. Another example is the open source project Geekin, a Go-based implementation. Vermilion Strike may not be the last Linux implementation of Beacon either. So be aware of your landscape, check your Red Hat code based servers, and check your current infrastructure monitoring processes to see what changes you need to make to catch this on any servers you have. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Oh, yeah.